Good evening, everyone. So this week we'll be discussing syndromic ichthyosis. Now, uh, since this, uh, the syndromic ichthyosis are a group of disorders in which you just have to mug up things. There's not much of a concept there, so we won't spare uh, spend some spend extra time into understanding the basic concepts underlying syndromic ichthyosis. So what I've done is I've divided the video into three parts, and all three parts will be uploaded simultaneously. So the first part concerns itself with disorders of cholesterol synthesis and clinically they have ichthyosis as a feature. The second part is excessive disorders of uh, cornification or disorders in which the cornified envelope is not properly formed leading to ichthyosis. And the third is neuroichthyosis in which ichthyosiform disorders have CNS symptoms also. So disorders of cornification is the second part, third part is neuroichthyosis and the first part which we will discuss right now are the X-linked disorders of cholesterol synthesis. So this will be the overview of understanding syndromic thiosis. I'll cover the most important factors or most important features of each disorder so that we can have a certain semblance of how to diagnose them. And if we have to write a short note or answer questions in Vivas, we'll be able to do so. So without much further ado, let's start our discussion on X-linked disorders of cholesterol synthesis. So in this group of disorders, the defect lies in cholesterol synthesis, as the name suggests, and that interferes with the cornified envelope formation. Now, if, uh, I would request you to go back and see the video on basics of keratinization, in which we discuss the importance of lamellar bodies. So lamellar bodies are very important for the entire process of keratinization. And in the entire process of keratinization, if any one gene is not working properly, if any one protein is not working properly, then you will have problems in the formation of corneocytes and corneodesmosomes and all the other uh, uh, proteins and structures which are required for proper formation of the cornified layer, the stratum corneum. If that layer is not properly formed, it will lead to an improper cornification or improper keratinization, and this leads to the ichthyosis, uh, or uh, in this leads to the abnormal scaly disorders, which we clinically call as ichthyosis. Now, disorders of uh, cholesterol synthesis or X-linked disorders of cholesterol synthesis are rare disorders, and they have a variable presentation, like all different disorders with ichthyosis. So let's move forward. So with that, we'll start our discussion, sorry, our discussion on X-linked disorders of cholesterol synthesis. The first disorder that we'll discuss first at first is Conradi Hunerman Happel syndrome, CHH. Okay, so CHH, Conradi Hunerman Happel syndrome. It is also known as Happel syndrome, Conradi syndrome. X-linked dominant chondrodysplasia type 2 is the name, uh, is another name for Conradi Hunerman Happel. So it is X-linked. Dominant chondrodysplasia type 2. Also, X linked dominant ichthyosis because this is X linked dominant. Remember, we have already discussed X linked recessive ichthyosis before. So, this is X linked dominant. It is ultra rare, affects only females because it is X linked dominant and it is lethal in male fetus. The feature of CHH is that it shows anticipation. Anticipation means that the disease worsens in subsequent generations. So if you have one generation affected with few features of CHH, other gen the next generation will be much more severe and the next generation will have severe manifestations of Conradi Hennerman Happel. It has extreme variability, so not all features may be present to the same extent or similarly in all the generations. It also has, uh, the, the problem lies in the imopamil binding protein mutation and that can occur at random also. So when this mutation occurs at random, features of CHH can present in a blast cord distribution or like a nebus. So this kind of, of uh, presentation can also be seen in CHH. For example, you can have uh, uh, lesions or, or symptoms presenting only in one limb or two limb or half the body. So that can also happen. You can mostly it is it is a generalized disorder. It, it involves the whole body. So the pathophysiology lies in the imopamil binding protein, and when that protein is mutated, the gene is mutated, and the protein is not able to properly function, you have problems in the late steps of cholesterol biosynthesis, especially delta A to delta seven steroid isomerase enzyme. But you don't have to remember the enzyme name. Just remember that the problem lies in the later steps of cholesterol synthesis. Okay, 
Now I have already, already told you that X link inactivation can lead to blast cord distribution of skin lesions. So that can be there. Remember, this disease uh, affects the female uh, female population. The male population uh, in fetal stages is this lethal for them. Now, because of this improper cholesterol biosynthesis at the later steps, the lamellar bodies lack normal architecture. So lamellar bodies are filled with lipids, and the, and it is required for proper conifer envelope formation. So when cholesterol is not synthesized properly, the lipids are not synthesized properly, you have problems in the formation of lamellar bodies and therefore they lack normal architecture. So let's move forward. So the babies are female, premature, partial collagen membrane can be there or generalized ichthyosiform erythroderma is the usual presenting feature at birth. So you can have generalized ichthyosiform with a background of erythema or you can have a partial collagen membrane. In less than one year, there is generalized linear and swirling patterns of erythroderma and scaling. And this scaling, usually the pattern follows a bit like uh, Blaschko lines. So this Blaschko line following pattern is seen. So that is described as generalized linear or swirling, like walls, okay? like walls of symptoms, walls of erythema, walls of scaling. So this is what we mean by uh, Blaschko distribution of erythroderma and scaling. The ichthyosis improves with age. So swirls of fine scales, linear pigmented change, patchy atrophy, follicular atrophoderma, stria secretorial alopecia, all of these are features when uh, they, these features tend to stay. The ichthyosis does improve with age, but features like fine scales or PIH or patchy atrophy or atrophoderma or secretorial alopecia, they do, they tend to stay. The ichthyotic scalic patches uh, improve with age leaving behind these disorders okay there is palmoplantar hyperkeratosis nail dystrophy recurrent infections are there and recurrent infection is something that you will keep on hearing in syndrome ichthyosis because the epidermal barrier is deficient and improper the hair are sparse and lusterless The faces, the face of the child is rounded or asymmetrical faces. There's frontal bossing, that means the frontal forehead has is protruding. Hypertelorism, that means the area between the eyes is longer, uh, is larger. So yes, we have widely spaced eyes. Broad, flat nasal bridge is there. So the nasal bridge looks flattened. There's congenital asymmetrical cataract seen in about 60% of patients. This short stature. Asymmetrical and symmetrical shortening of limbs. So there is short stature. That is a very important feature of chondritic enervation Happel syndrome that the height will be extremely short. There's kyphoscoliosis, spinal abnormalities are a feature, supernumerary digits, and skeletal defects. So the spine may be in, in kyphoscoliosis, there's the, the frontal curvature is curved. Oh, sorry, the, the bending is more towards the fr frontal line. So, all in, in fact, scoliosis is a very important feature of CHH. So, spinal abnormalities and other skeletal defects are features seen in Conradi Hennerman Happel. Now, characteristically, a thing that has been described is stippled calcification or asymmetrical stippled calcification of long bone epiphysis. So, let's say you have a bone. Okay. And this is the epiphyseal plate. Now, this is a normal epiphyseal plate. But in CHH, what you will have, what you will have is just stippling. That means like this kind of striations. Okay. So that is known as stippled epiphysis or stippled calcification of epiphysis. And it is characteristically seen in, in x-ray of long bones in patients with CHH. There's mildly impaired intellectual development with neural with neural hearing losses. So the thing to remember are round asymmetrical faces, short stature, spinal defects, skeletal defects, and mildly impaired inter intellectual development. Let's move forward. And remember that the stippled calcification improves with age. Now the differential diagnosis include men's syndrome which is another disorder in which EBP gene is mutated and but that has an X-link recessive trait. This is an X-link dominant chondrodysplasia type 2. Management includes that uh, ichthyosis can be managed with urea containing emollients and additionally paraffin based emollients can also be used. But remember ichthyosis improves with age. Antibiotics topical or systemic depending on the level of infections and orthopedic surveillance and correction of deformities. 
so the deformities need to be corrected if there is any spinal deformities then that has to be taken or any other skeletal defects those have to be corrected deformities now the second syndrome in the disorders of lamellar, uh, lamellar body synthesis or disorders of cholesterol is the child syndrome child is congenital hemidysplasia with ichthyosiform nevus and limb defect syndrome it is very rare X link dominant again the same as Conradi Hinderman Happel syndrome, male lethal disorder because it's an X link dominant disorder, and the problem again lies in the distal cholesterol biosynthesis. Now it has been classified as inflammatory nevus now because in this the ichthyosiform lesions present as a nevi. It's not a generalized involvement, you have a nevus. The nevus that means there's a localized involvement of the skin in the form of ichthyosis or scales. The mutation lies in the NSDHL gene which imports for 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Again, you need not remember the name of the enzymes. Just remember that it is a nevoid type of presentation and it's an X-linked disorder. Now, placental insufficiency can occur, okay, because you have, you are interfering with the synthesis of cholesterol. That is required for proper placenta development. If cholesterol is not synthesized properly, the placenta is insufficient to hold the fetus. And it's since this being an X-linked dominant disorder and the fetus, if it's male, has only one gene coming, uh, coming for X. In, in females, you have two copies, but in males, you have one. If that gene is not supplying the proper cholesterol synthesis, the placenta is not able to maintain that fetus properly. And because of that, the males will have mid-gestational mortality with a thin and poorly vascularized placenta. So this is uh, any placental loss before in the history can give you an idea that you are, you are looking at X-linked dominant ichthyosiform disorders. Okay, so you need, you need to ask for the features or any problems in prior pregnancies. Okay, let's move forward. Now in child nevus, that means in child nevus or the nevoid presentation, you have a lateralization patterns. That means right is more than left or left is more than right. And there's a strict midline demarcation. In fact, I'll show, I'll show you a photograph uh, in the next slide to show that there's a strict midline demarcation. If, if this is, let's say, the trunk, the ichthyotic part will affect the half part and it will restrict itself to one half. It will not cross the midline. It also shows tychotrop. Tropism, tycho means fold, okay? So tychotropism means that the disease has an affinity to body folds involving more, more, or more of the body fold areas. There's hyperkeratosis with typical yellow wax-like scaling. Ipsilateral hypoplasia or aplasia of the limbs and internal organs is also present. So uh, if it involves the one half of the body, the underlying organs are also affected and they are hypoplastic or decreased in size. The treatment includes that the, le the lesions do improve in the first years of life, but itching and oozing can be there. You need to take care of itching and oozing. So doing simple derma abrasion with specific thickness grafting does seem, seem to help a bit because of donor dominance. Because if you're going to supply a new graft a skin from a normal side of the body, you will have the cells which do not have the mutation in them. Okay, only the cells in the affected part has the mutation. So if you supply strip thickness grafting from a normal part to the affected part, you are essentially supplying cells which have normal gene. So it will show improvement. Now topical therapy you can suppress epidermal cholesterol biosynthesis and then you can simultaneously apply topical cholesterol. In other words, you apply a cream suppress the altered cholesterol formation and then supply normal cholesterol instead. So thus lesions will start to improve. Clear? Let's move forward. Coming to the third disorder which is ichthyosis follicularis, ertrichia and photophobia syndrome. So this is a disorder in which you have the features of ichthyosis follicularis that means follicular scaly plaques, ertrichia that means no hair and photophobia. It has mild acanthokeratosis with hyperkeratosis of follicular opening. So remember, the follicle area is what is affected in ichthyosis follicularis, ertrichia, and photophobia syndrome. It's an X-linked disorder but recessive. In the previous two disorders, they were X-linked dominant. So Conradi Hinerman Apple and Child syndrome are X-linked dominant disorder, while IFAP syndrome is recessive. It has severe growth retardation and psychomotor development, which is severely impacted. 
The mutation lies in MBTPS2 gene, which encodes for membrane-bound transcription factor protease site 2. You do not need to remember the name. Just remember that genetic mutation is there and it's an X-linked recessive disorder. And if you can remember, remember the gene, MBTPS2. You have well-preserved granular layer with absence of sebaceous gland. Why absent? Because the cholesterol is not is forming properly. Treatment is low dose acetratin, emollients, and intensive lubrication of ocular surface. Remember, photophobia occurs because of corneal involvement. So, if you're going to lubricate the eyes, it helps in that. Okay. The triad consists of, as the name suggests, follicular ichthyosis, congenital atrichia of the scalp, which is absence of it, and photophobia. So, this triad is an important point which you should remember for vivas or you should remember for your uh, examination of questions. This could, this could be a very good quiz question also. At birth, they can be colloidal baby. But after that, it becomes a generalized follicular keratosis and then congenital alopecia. And this alopecia is a characteristic feature. So if you have follicular scaly plaques or papules along with congenital alopecia, you should think of IFAP syndrome. Other features include psoriasiform plaques, angular colitis, periangular inflammation, dystrophic nails, hypohydrosis, and atopic eczema. So, in IFAP, superficial corneal ulceration and vascularization leads to progressive corneal scarring and that leads to photophobia. So, you have problems in the cornea. <clears throat> Neurological features include intellectual disability, seizures, oligocerebral atrophy, temporal lobe malformation, cerebral atrophy, corpus callosum hypotrophy. So these are the CNS symptoms. We need not remember that. Just remember that you have CNS involvement. The dental development is normal. So teeth would be normal. And female carriers can have milder symptoms. Okay. So it's an X-link recessive disorder. That means in a female, both X have to be affected for it to cause symptoms. But if only one is affected and they become female carriers, the symptoms are milder. So in this time, uh, what I've done is I've made a table in which I'll summarize the disorder and the genetic mutation. Because some, some of them, some of you have asked that if you could highlight this kind of mutations and uh, syndromes. Okay. So in chondritic hinnerman happel syndrome, you have gene is gene that is affected is EBP, which encodes for imopangal binding protein. In the child syndrome, you have problems in the NSDHL gene, which encodes for NADP dependent steroid dehydrogenase like protein. In IFAP, you have problems in the MBTPS2 gene, which is membrane bound transcription factor protease type 2. And in the autosomal dominant type of IFAP, you have problem in SREBF1. So just remember, I've just summarized. Uh, uh, the disorders in the uh, along with the protein which is affected. So these are the chapters that I have uh, collect, uh, I've read for the preparation of this video. But you need not read about it if you have gone through this video properly. Okay. So with that, I will again request that uh, because in these disorders and, and explaining about these disorders, I need to use clinical photographs for you to have a better understanding. But because of YouTube guidelines, I cannot use it. So either you will see a black and white version or even you might not even see the photographs. So those photographs are available for the members only. So I will request you to consider joining the membership of the channel. You will have a lot of different features and new features which will keep on adding. We have a lot of things to do and it is available at a discounted rate till the end of this year, till the end of 31st December this year. So I will request you that if, you, if possible, do be, uh, become a member of this channel for the benefits. Okay, so with that will take a very short break because after break we'll discuss the part two of the series in which will have disorders of cornification. Okay, and all three parts will be uploaded simultaneously. So after finishing one part, you can directly go ahead and look at the other parts. And dividing into part is important because then you can have some semblance, some understanding of what disorders we are talking about if you know the what heading they were discussed. So without much further ado, adios and bye bye, and I'll see you in the next part.